Welcome back, friends. Happy Thursday. This is the fifth episode of Tacky Talks. Today we're tackling special pathways to get into medical school in Ontario. We're going to go through each school and talk about all the different options you have. But before we jump into that, um, I'm Haley. I'm Adrian. I'm Kylie. Kylie. <laughs> uh, I guess I guess we're okay. saying at the same time now. <laughs> and uh, and um, did you guys? What did you guys get up to this week? This week, hmm, I am currently training with my friends to bike 200 kilometers. So, uh, this week we en- we went on a 50 kilometer bike ride. Not too bad. We're just trying to get our timing good. We're gonna trying to do 50 kilometers in under three hours if we can. And yeah, so just kind of practicing for that a little bit. Gonna bike from Windsor to London. That's our end goal. Nice. Nice. This week. <laughs> That's cool. Nice. Um, <laughs> That's great, Audrey. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Very nice. Um, this week, I got a bunch of my junk that was in my parents' basement, where I'm living right now, and moved it back to my house in Windsor, which is really fun. So I'm not as big as, not as messy. Um, and then I had a few meetings with Haley about some research stuff. We worked on a manuscript, which was really exciting. Uh, my nephews are coming over today. So it's been a nice, relaxing week. Got a lot done. I was really productive. I woke up before 11 in more than one day this week, which is really nice. Um, so yeah, it was a good week. Kaylee, what about you? Uh, I didn't get up to much. Like I said, I had a few research meetings with her, worked on our manuscript. Um, and other than that, I kind of just, I worked on a week planning, chatted with some incoming first years, um, nothing too exciting that's you know what we all did we all did this week though we all went on the quarantines podcast quarantines podcast uh if you're listening on youtube please check out our description we'll have a link there it's it was how'd you guys feel about that i i really enjoyed it i had so much fun fun. fun. there's so much fun like the um it's such a fun show and we got to talk about non-med stuff so if you want to hear us just like being goofy and such uh, definitely go check that out. If you're not on YouTube, you can go to our Instagram and it will be linked in our bio to check that out. Follow the Quarantings guys. Um, it's just at Quarantings. No, they're great. Um, yeah, they're putting they, out really have, good like, content. Yeah, they're hilarious and so they're entertaining. So, so definitely go check that out. And um, if you guys are listening, thanks for having us. Thank you for having us so much. <laughs> Thank you. Big hush. All right. Uh-huh. Now, so, Kylie, do you want to give us our weekly disclaimer? Actually, we're going to swish it around a little bit um, just for this week. So I what we're talking about today is special access pathways. And for these pathways, you're probably wondering, what is this? What are you talking about? Is there different ways I can get into medicine? And yes, there is. Um, it depends. A lot of the pathways depend on things like geographic location. We're going to be talking about a pathway you can apply to from high school, um, about your background, so your cultural background. We have a whole bunch of different ones that we've compiled for all the Ontario medical schools today. Next week, we're going to be talking about out of province. So if you're thinking about applying to um, UBC, Saskatchewan, Manitoba, um, MUN out in Newfoundland, oh, sorry, (laughs) Um, I can't speak. Or if you're thinking about applying to Dalhousie, tune in next week for that. A disclaimer, um, we have nothing to do with OMSAS, and this is just our advice based on our own research. And these streams, they change every single year. Uh, What the, I guess, requirements are for each of these streams, they will change. Um, So if you're listening for the 2020-2021 application cycle, that's what we've done research for. But if you're listening in the year 2030, just kidding. (laughs) You never (laughs) know. Things might have changed by then. Um, So definitely go check out the websites. And to make this even easier for you, what we've done is Haley has created um, a really cool link tree. And this is going to link everything that we have so our youtube or spotify google Podcasts, which we will be on soon um everything will be on there and we're also creating a resource folder so we're gonna put everything that we talk about is gonna go in this resource folder or if you're watching on youtube you can just check the bio um but this will have links to every single pathway on every single website so we made this so easy for you so just keep in mind that what we're talking about this could change at time of recording this is what it says it could change 
Go check the website for all the information that you might need. And again, we have nothing to do with these med schools. Don't come for us. <laughs> Either way, Our like it's a admissions. great, it's going to be a great inter uh, overview of all the different pathways. So even if you're not listening in the 2020, 2021 uh, interview year, it will be like a good overview for you. So keep listening uh, in the year 2030. Hello to the future. Just listen to us in general, honestly. <laughs> just, just keep Please. listening to us. <laughs> we like that. All right, take it away with the ones at Western Advate. All right, so. Our favorite pathway. Uh, one of the pathways I actually used myself. The and me. S- the Swoman pathway, not the Not S- me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Swoman pathway, not S-woman, but Swoman. If you say it like that, I don't think there's a problem, is there? S-woman. S- I like that better. S-woman? S-woman. Oh, I always said Swoman in my head. It is Swoman. It is Swoman. <laughs> I remember somebody used to like say swoman to me when I was an undergrad and I didn't really know much about app- applying to med school at that time. And then I used to always think they're saying swimming, like the swimming, the swimming pathway. pathway. So I thought they had like, I'm not even joking. Fresh I thought Western had like some special, uh, fancy diving. some special thing for swimmers. And I'm like, I'm a swimmer. This is great. Hey, I <laughs> was a swimmer. Stand for, Advait? What does swimmer stand for? Tell the people what they want to know. What does swimmer stand for? Yeah. Southwestern Ontario Medical Education Network. Is that what it stands for? Yes. Yes. I got it right. Ding, ding, ding. I was stressing it for a sec. But what Swoman is. what is, is it? Um, yeah. So Swoman is a special pathway that Schulich offers, or Western, I should say Western's Med School offers, uh, for students that are in Southwestern Ontario. So I'm going to list off a bunch of counties here. So we get ready to write it down or listen to see if your county has been said. But... Gray, Bruce, Huron, Perth, Oxford, Elgin, Middlesex, Lambton, Chatham, Kent, and Essex. Um, and if you're from any of these places, then you have you're you're classified as Southwestern Ontario. Um, in order to actually get the Swoman status, I guess you have to have been going to a high school in this place for your entire high school. So. Um, Grade 9 to grade 12. I don't think it really counts if you moved there when you're in grade 11 and went for two years. You have to be going to high school in these counties for four years. And what Swoman offers is lower MCAT cutoffs. You still need the same MCAT total when applying to Schulich, which is 380 of the three sections, chemistry, biology, and cars. But your cutoffs are only 125 for each section. So as long as you get... A total of 380 but have higher than 125 for each or 125 and above i shouldn't say higher than 125 it's 125 and above then your mcat cutoffs meet uh shulix's uh cutoffs I, i'm saying cutoffs too much but <laughs> uh, just one other thing to cutoffs. clarify about this pathway if you don't mind that base yeah, yeah. Is, um I don't know if i'm just big dumb which is definitely a possibility but i always saw it when i was applying that it was like rural like that you had to be in the county of these counties like if you were in essex county you had to be rural and it's not that so if you're in windsor that's a part of essex county if you're in london that's a part of middlesex Mm -hmm. so it's the entire county it's not just the county part of the county if that makes any sense (laughs) no that's actually a really because some people might be confused with that too yeah that's a really good distinction um but yeah you only need 125 at least 125 in each section with a total of 380 as opposed to um other western or other students applying to western will need 126 like bio like kylie 126 <laughs> bio 127 cars 127 chem fizz. so um you get a little bit of a benefit with the mcat but once again the total is still 380 it's the same and the gpa cutoffs are the same it's 3.7 for your top two years uh, just the, an example sorry yeah, yeah. i of things changing every year when we all applied to medical school the cutoffs for non swimming i believe i went in thinking it was going to end up being a 129 in cars i think it ended up being a 128 but it just goes to show you they don't tell you before the cutoffs are based on like the application pool so aim for as high as you can on your mcat mm-hmm. uh, if you're non swimming and then see what happens but if you want to apply uh, i know this isn't a pathway but like let's say that like the cutoff right now is a 126 in or sorry a 127 in cars could change to 126 in cars next year nobody knows so always apply even if you're not at the cutoffs yet 
could also go up as well to 128. Nobody exactly. knows. So, exactly. Yeah. If you're writing the MCAT, uh, listen to our MCAT episode that we did. But the main thing should be just try to do as good as, as you can. Even if you're swimming, you still want to be able to, you know, have that comfortableness in knowing that you don't have to rewrite or that you can apply to other places as well. But yeah, the whole point of swimming is to try to get physicians to stay in southwestern Ontario. Um, because that area does Yikes. need a lot of physicians as well. So um, it, it's a great opportunity if it counts for you. And what do you need to bring to uh, apply to this pathway? At yeah, so at the moment, I don't know if it's going to change in the future, but at the moment, uh, all you have to do is bring your high school transcript to your interview. Now, interviews might be online in the future. We don't know how it's going to work, so they might change it, but that's what they used to do. You just need to be able to get your hands on a high school transcript, which isn't hard. Usually you just call the office and ask. That's what I did. Yeah. Um, and unlike university, I don't think I had to pay for it, which was nice. I think I had to pay um, for mine. You had to pay for yours? Yeah. Oh, sucks to suck. I know. <laughs> okay. So Western does have another pathway that we want to talk about. This is the access pathway. It's a little bit newer. Um, and the access pathway is meant for applicants who have um, experienced potentially uh, – like have experienced sociocultural barriers or financial or medical barriers, basically anything that could adversely impact um, their experiences and create a disadvantage. So what happens if you're applying through this pathway is you get the same MCAT cutoffs as SWOMAN. So the MCAT cutoffs get lowered. Um, what you need to provide is a little bit different. So you need to specify that you're applying through the access pathway. You need to describe um, why you're applying through the pathway, like what your barriers are. So that could be medical, financial, sociocultural, um, and those are all outlined on the website. So if you are not sure if you fit into one of them, what they they kind of describe how a person can fit into each of those categories. So check that out on the website for sure. And then you just need a written statement about how you've overcome those barriers or adapt to those barriers and how this is going to be like potentially help you be successful in medical school. Um, and then finally, supporting documentation. And that will vary based on which barrier you're facing. So it might be medical statements. It might be financial statements. Again, they, they outline all of that on the website, um, what exactly you need, and it will be dependent on which category you kind of fit into. Um, so check out our links to our resources tabs to check all of that out. But it is a great pathway um, because it can be difficult if you're working. Like I know one of them is if you work 25 hours a week throughout your undergraduate, you, you um, can apply to this pathway, which is great because it's hard to keep your grades up and get extracurriculars in when you need that income to support yourself through your education. So that's kind of the purpose of that pathway. Yeah. So access is like super vague a little bit, right? Super vague. Yeah. And I think the reason it's so vague is that everyone goes through different different things in their path to medicine. So they don't want to put a label on what they define as a barrier. So if you think you have some kind of barrier that you've gone through in your life up to this point, definitely apply through Access. Mm -hmm. um, and for both Swoban and Access, they, there, are no, there are always rumors of post-interview for Swoman at least, post-interview boosts, but none of that has ever been confirmed by Western. So people say that Swoman have a better chance getting in or get a bump in their score after interviews, and that's never been confirmed. So I every year you'll hear people saying that, but we have no idea if it's true. So don't count on that. Just do really well in your interview. Yeah, I think that's just like a good advice for everything. Just kind of focus on yourself. Try to do the best that you can do. Like when you're writing the MCAT, try to get the best score you can get. When you're giving your interview, try to do the best interview you can give. And then the rest is up to what people think. Your interviewers. All right. All righty. You ready to move on to U of T? Let's move Friends? on to U of T. Let's do it. Okay. So um, U of T has a few pathways. Uh, the one we're going to talk about right now is BSAP, or the Black Student Application Program. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit more about some other pathways through U of T a little bit later in the podcast. But right now. BSAP, uh, what is that? So all this information comes straight from U of T's website and they describe it as an optional application stream for black applicants who self-identify as black African, black Caribbean, black North American, multi or multiracial students who have and identify with their black ancestry. So how does this help students? 
Basically, it aims to increase and support black medical student representation at the University of Toronto and break barriers that might impede uh, black students from applying to medical school, which is really awesome. Um, and what do you have to do to apply to this program? So there's only really two things. Uh, you have to self-identify on the OMSAS application, as well as submit a personal essay highlighting why you've chosen to apply through this pathway. And the essay is 250 words or less. One really cool thing uh, that I had no idea that U of T did when I was researching this is they have something called a community of support. And what this does is it helps black students uh, in undergraduate programs find mentors, job shadowing, volunteer, research opportunity, admissions information, as well as guidance uh, about how to get into medicine. And from their website, it says that this, this helps participants build skills and connections that help level the playing field when it comes time to applying to med school, uh, which is awesome. And they, we're going to have a link again uh, for resources. And on U of T's website, they have a direct link to the um, community of support. So if you identify as black and think that you could take advantage of this, I highly recommend it. That's awesome. Um, and so some FAQs about this program, both domestic and international applicants can apply via this pathway. Um, same academic requirements as everyone else applying to U of T or University of Toronto. And there's no quota for admission. Uh, so this year, they accepted 24 black students into the class of 2024, which is the highest number of black students accepted into a single class at the University of Toronto, which is awesome. That's amazing. Uh, yeah. yeah, it's really amazing. Um, so before we move on to another school, we just want to have a quick chat about diversity in medicine and why it's so, so, so important. So kind of like a lot of these pathways, the point of them is to help include people who are traditionally have a harder time getting into medical school. So whether that's because of your circumstance, your background, your socioeconomic background. Um, there are groups of people that traditionally aren't included in medical classes. And this is kind of a way of trying to correct that because the problem is that um, the communities that are underserved by doctors, those people are facing barriers that mean they don't usually end up in medical school. And then there's nobody to go back and support that community as doctors. So we're trying to break that cycle by diversifying the classes and allowing those underserved communities, people can go back to their community and be a doctor there and uplift more people. Um, so kind of like that's the point is to break those cycles and um, diversify the class. Yeah. Yeah. And sorry, Abby, you go. No, I was just going to add in a little thing where I remember seeing a post a few days ago about a student who created this book about uh, I think dermatology and skin conditions. Yeah, this is awesome. That's yeah. really, really cool. You guys yeah. know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah. Yeah. Basically what it was, though, is that, like, when we learn about signs of disease that you can see on the skin or skin conditions, all of the pictures that were shown are on white skin. So there have been, like, people have talked about their experiences where they're in the hospital and they miss something because they don't know what that same sign or that same rash or whatever that's... That, that you can see on the skin they don't know what that looks like on black or brown skin um so a big problem in the medical education is that we don't have those pictures nobody has ever thought to supply those and so s there was a medical student who collected those pictures up and created a book of what that those things that we're looking for look like on black and brown skin yeah and that, that's just Which, super cool yeah. yeah well it's crazy that we didn't have that. We don't have that in the year 2020. I know when that. you think I, about it. it That's like mind blowing. And I think that's another like point as to why diversity in medicine is so important. Like we need these like different opinions and like a diverse perspective. And like I like if you're not watching on like YouTube, I'm white. Like I my path to medicine has a ton of privilege in it. And so, you know, I think it's so important that they ha we have these programs and diversity in medicine is extremely important well like and it's almost embarrassing to say but like sitting in class and seeing those pictures i never i never crossed my mind that like i wouldn't recognize that on skin that isn't white because that's like i'm i'm also white if you're not listening and it's like just a, such a sign of my privilege that it never crossed my mind to think yeah. like oh well what does this look like on people who aren't white so it's amazing like that's that's just such a sign that we need to diversify medicine the fact that it didn't even cross my mind it's embarrassing to say but um i've learned i've taken the opportunity to learn and check out the stuff that's being put out now and hopefully um 
increase my knowledge base a little bit and hopefully be a good doctor one day. I mean, that's the end goal, right? (laughs) It's at the end of these four years. Um, One more thing before we move on to talking about uh, NOSM a little bit is that I just want to say, like, if you are a minority and you are either pre-med or want to go into medicine, another great resource to check out um, is Twitter, like Med Twitter. There's a lot of, like, great physicians on there. Um, They're providing a ton of guidance and there's all kinds of resources. So definitely sign up. We're going to talk about Med Twitter probably in a few weeks, uh, but it's really it's a really great resource as well. So definitely check that out. Another thing I was going to add in, uh, actually just just before we switched to NOSM was um, for the diversity, I know it's also very common for people uh, in different cultural backgrounds to be comfortable with a physician from that same cultural background. And I was just going to throw in an example, but like I'm Indian and by Indian, I mean like Asian Indian. Um, and my parents definitely uh, feel more comfortable talking to a another Indian doctor. That doesn't mean they won't talk to other doctors. They do, like, when needed. But our family doctor has been Indian for a very long time. Just because, like, when we first came to this country, which uh, was, like, what, 17, 18 years ago, they weren't the best at English. And because of that, it, it was really helpful when we had a another Indian doctor who could understand us in a, in a different language. Um, so... Just having diversity and having physicians who can represent different cultures and ethnic backgrounds like that, I think is just really important. Okay, NOSM is up next, right? NOSM, yeah. Uh, so NOSM, What does NOSM stand for? North Ontario School of Medicine. Can, can you guys stop asking me what these acronyms stand for? Because I'm going to... It's a quiz. <laughs> There's so many acronyms in medicine, though. I'm going to get to a point where I'll actually, like not no i'll have to google it it's just gonna be like a minute of silence before i find the answer so can <laughs> okay, we one of us will jump in <laughs> yeah please if i don't know it just one of me jump in um so nasum has i guess applying to nasum itself is a little bit different than other schools because the other ontario schools uh pretty much just you could just apply and do their essays get their prereqs and that's it but for nasum Uh, One thing that they do for all their applicants is put a score based on their geographic or cultural criteria. And they don't exactly explain how they do this score, but it is a score that is there. So they give a score based on if you had a rural background, depending on how many years you lived in a rural community and you were in Canada. That is defined by Statistics Canada. Um, They give you some points if you have a northern background based on the years lived in northern Ontario or another Canadian Northern region. Um, You have a score based on self-identified Francophone applicants, and then there's a score based on Indigenous applicants who apply through NOSM's Indigenous application stream. And for anyone listening, we will have a more in-depth talk about Indigenous applicants uh, later on, combining all the universities together a little bit. But yeah. Yeah, later in the podcast. Later in the podcast. Probably like 20 minutes. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, just keep keep listening if you're an Indigenous applicant, and then we will talk a little bit more about that. Um, but yeah, so NOSM just applying normally puts a huge, uh, huge emphasis on your cultural and geographical background. Um, in terms of different streams in NOSM when you're applying, there is a Francophone stream, but this isn't really like the Francophone stream in Ottawa, where Ottawa has specific seats that they save for Francophone applicants, which we will also talk about in a few minutes. Uh, this is essentially just if you identify as a francophone applicant, they're going to try to put you in a community that is more uh, French oriented. They're going to try to put your clinical rotations in communities where you can also serve people that are speaking French as well. But if you have any special circumstance, and this is going to be super vague because that's how um, NASA wants to leave it, kind of like Western's access pathway. But if you have any special circumstance at all at your academic performance that you want to kind of explain to NOSM, then you can send them a report using the secure applicant messaging system, the SAM system on OMSAS, where you can kind of explain whatever you want to explain. um, And that's just something they'll take into consideration with your application as well. So once again, super vague. If there's something you really want them to know that you think will help um, explain your application a little bit or help just identify how you are as a person to NOSM, then go ahead and, you know, shoot your shot. Shoot your shot. Shoot your shot. You got this. Um, yeah, that's it for NOSM, I think. If you, I don't know if you guys wanted to add anything. 
No, you cover it. You did amazing. No, you did amazing, you. Thank sweetie. Thank you. You, you did so great. I may or may not so have been reading off of a second screen. We'll leave that to. Uh, <laughs> I mean, this is very Who like knows? very detail oriented. Yeah, stuff, yeah. I don't so. want to get like any detail wrong here. That's why. Um. So the next one we're gonna chat about is a little different, and it's pretty interesting. So this is the. Did we decide how you say it? it Quarms? Is it Q arms? I think it's Q arms. I like Q arms. Q arms. Q arms kind of sounds like a. I, does it just mean just Q arms kind of sound like a military thing? Yeah, it does. It kind of does. Yeah. I see, that's, there's a military base in Kingston, so. Yeah, there's, and they have the Royal, what's it, the, the military college is there, too. Yeah, that. the Royal Military College. Yeah. All right, what does, QR, what does QARM <laughs> stand for, huh? <laughs> Sorry. It stands for Queen's University Accelerated Route to Medical School. Okay, okay. Crap. I didn't think she was actually going to get that. It's written right uh, here I might have <laughs> put the description in the Google Doc, so I'm helping Haley out. Um, Wait, what Google so, Doc? There's a Google Doc? What are you talking about? What? What? This is actually this is an interesting pathway because it's actually one that you take from high school. So if you're a high school listener, shout out to you. You are so prepared right now. Wow. Um, but basically what this is, it's like the name stress an accelerated route to medical school. So if you get into this program, you only have to do two years of your undergraduate before you're eligible to apply to Queen's Medical School. You do still have to write your MCAT and there are certain things that you have to keep up so like grades or um uh i think it's grades and like you have certain you have to have five courses a semester i don't know you would have to look on the website for the specifics there are certain mm -hmm. things that you need to keep up though um and then you apply to queen's medical schools now it's not a guaranteed entry to medical school it just means that after two years you are eligible to apply to medical school at queen's uh so how do you get into this pathway um, so you apply through OUAC, OWAC, o o o -WAC, what do they call it? I, I say OUAC. OUAC, that's what it is. O -U -A -C. Really? I just called it OUAC. <laughs> no, no we, it's o -U -A -C. my guidance that's counselor always called it OUAC. Yeah, that's o -U -A -C. what they called it in my school too. But so just like you would apply to any other undergraduate program, it will be an option on OUAC that you apply to. Um, and you can apply to art, science, computing, or health sciences. So it's not like you have to take a specific, you don't have to take life sciences, you don't have to take biology. You can apply to any undergraduate degree um, and you have to submit by the December 1st deadline. The deadline for this is December 1st. Uh, and then if you're selected for an interview, you go and do your interview or they might be online this year because of COVID, who really knows? Um, and then they select 10 people. So there are 10 spots for this program. Um, and like I said before, you still have to write your MCAT in those two years. There are certain requirements that you have to uphold through the two years um, and you're not guaranteed admission but it is like she's winking if you're listening <laughs> like, <laughs> like they're not gonna accept you into the q arms pathway if they don't think that you have a good shot at getting in you know <laughs> but then just just to be safe you never know you know you never so, know yeah. you, never, you know. never know what's gonna happen so that just it is not a guaranteed acceptance and they make it really clear on their website um and they've they've if you go through like they have said that they've revised their policy recently um so just means you can apply after two years i'm gonna say something about q arms which i think is really cool yeah but um since actually no don't say anything <laughs> sorry <laughs> i'm sorry <laughs> keep going okay i'm, I'm gonna ignore you. kylie and just say what's <laughs> on my mind but i think q arms is really cool because um a lot of students that in high school know that they want to go to med school apply for these science programs like biology biochemistry health side i don't know whatever but q arms kind of gives you the opportunity to pursue some courses or pursue like a degree in something else that might not be related to medicine that you're still interested in so like i was always kind of interested or like i liked physics i know some a lot of people out there hate it but Me. I like I'm one of those. <laughs> I'm offended by that you just said it. No, like I, I like physics and math. So like I actually like I really want to learn how to program and code. And I think taking like two years of computer science would have been really cool for me if I had the opportunity. And then I, I like I still want to go into medicine. So you have that there for you as well. You have to complete all the prereqs, though. It's not like you just get in. But, you know, knowing that you can go into something like computer science or like drama music something that you're really passionate about but still knowing that you have that road med there and like you can do that normally as well like you can still be in music and like apply to med school but um 
Q, Q arms or qualms just kind of gives that kind of sense of security a little bit. Alternatively, if you're unsure about medicine or you'd like to spend your first two years of your undergraduate making sure that you attend at least one party for everything possible, like ABC parties, glow parties, you want to do one of each, bucket list kind of thing, you can always go the four-year route like the rest of us, and that's okay too. You don't need to be one of the ten. You can do all of those theme parties. That was on my bucket list. Uh, the parties? <laughs> the yeah. theme parties are so fun. I mean, it depends how well it's being hosted. Because theme parties can be like, if not everyone's I dressing up. I did not up. go to any poorly hosted parties. Mostly oh, yeah, we forgot. You went to Trent. hosted most yeah. of them. I was going to say, only the best for Haley. Yeah, uh, yeah. Only the best. Of course. <laughs> She would have, like, Drake at all her parties, right? Sean Mendez used to come to our homecoming every year. Like, not to perform, like, to hang out. At Trent? Yeah, because his friend, he's from Oshawa or something, or he has friends from Oshawa. Yeah. No, he's from, he's from, like, the Durham area. Um, yeah, so he used to, before he was, like, really famous, he would come and just hang out ahead of the Trent. So, look at him. He's, like, a famous singer now. What, like, what are you doing? Yeah. Come on. Come yeah. On. What am Maybe I doing? that's I'm failing at life. No, you're not. You're in med school stuff. You're fine. <laughs> Maybe that's a fact you should lead with, though. Be like, I went to Trent. Sean Mendes used to come hang out with us. <laughs> that, that's, you know, that's kind of like sad when your fun fact is about another person just being there. That's true. I have tons of fun facts. You guys just don't think they're fun. I don't want to know them. Yeah, I don't. I'm really not interested. I'm done. Yeah. Like, also, I'm, Sean Mendez was like known for like going to different schools' homecomings. So, I saw honestly, him pop up really what, He was probably just trying to like get people to listen to his albums. Yeah, you have to do that. Come on, it's so hard to be like a professional singer and stuff. You got to promote yourself. I mean, it worked. He's it worked. out in Miami He's, living with Camila. Yeah. Should Cameo, we go to so. all the schools' homecoming to promote the podcast? We should. Tacky talks, tacky. Talks. But like, are you actually going to promote it? Or are you trying to go for another reason? <laughs> I love homecomings. <laughs> we don't actually during so COVID, fun. like we don't know how schools are gonna be this probably next no yeah, probably not yeah, going to Probably not happen. No, there's no way homecomings going in, on in the Invite fall us this to year. your Zoom homecomings. Invite us to your Zoom homecomings. <laughs> Imagine Zoom call like twenty like fifteen thousand people. <laughs> hey what's Everyone up you just guys? Screaming. <laughs> Check out my YouTube channel. <laughs> if nothing works out, we can still always try to get a uh, Trudeau to be a guest on our show. And that could help us give some publicity too. Oh, like the prime minister? Yeah. What would Those are high goals. That what do you mean? What would be his co- anything? It doesn't matter. He's the prime minister of Canada. He can contribute whatever he wants yeah, he to us. Contribute. He can it's, just smile at me. And you know what's the first school, step to get him to contribute? It's to talk about the Ottawa School of Medicine. Oh, you like that segue? Oh, oh. 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 Like segue. my head's going to explode. <laughs> Anyways, talk about Ottawa. We're getting okay, off. Okay, yeah, let's just talk about Ottawa. That, that took way too long to like transition into. <laughs> <laughs> uh ottawa i love you let's do this so ottawa has on average 166 students in their class as a total and they separate it based on two streams the anglophone stream and the francophone stream so roughly 118 is going to be anglophone and 48 is francophone um all the students still learn in english it's just that the francophone students will have some additional stuff in french so um on OMSAS, you have to declare which stream you are applying for. And once you are in that stream, you can't really switch. So uh, make sure you're applying properly. And if you're applying for the Francophone stream, they are going to ask you some interview questions in French. So it's not like I took grade four French and I know like how to say <laughs> omelette du fromage, right? It's like <laughs> you have to have a conversation. People are probably cringing <laughs> on why I said that and how I said that. <laughs> no, they're probably laughing. I'm laughing. I thought that was funny. <laughs> Is that from, I think that's from like Dexter's Laboratory, if you guys remember that cartoon. Um, but anyway. I do, but I don't remember the show. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Search that on YouTube. Uh, Omelette du fromage from Dexter's Laboratory. Anyway, um, <laughs> they have another thing that you can apply for. It's the CNFS. And oh God, I'm going to try to say this, but I might butcher it. Consortium National took great for Deformation French. en Santé. Did I say that right? Consortium Chef's National kiss. Deformation en, set, en, Chef's kiss. en Santé. That's an excellent aigu on the E. Beautiful. So it's an A. Um, Trey Bell. Santé aigu. Très bien. Très bien. All right. Thank so you. this is eight seats reserved for French-speaking candidates applying outside of Ontario and Quebec. 
um, you're still going to be a Canadian citizen, but you're just French speaking in a different province other than Ontario and Quebec. And you're going to be doing same application through OMSAS, so just apply through OMSAS. And I think what you have to do is send a letter to the admissions of the uh, Faculty of Medicine at the University of Ottawa, informing them you're, that you're applying through this route. Um, you still need all the prereq courses, though, and like uh, Casper and everything else that Ottawa requires. But this is eight seats that they kind of have reserved for French-speaking students from other provinces, which is pretty cool. Um, and what that kind of means is you need to have lived outside of Ontario and Quebec a permanent address for at least five years outside of these regions. So you have to provide that uh, proof as well. How that comes, I'm not really sure, but that's something that you should go on their website to double check or email Ottawa's uh, admissions faculty. But yeah, um, they also give financial support for traveling because they know that you're going to have to travel a long way, but I don't know how interviews are going to work the next year, so um, we'll just hold up on that for a sec. But do know that they do give traveling fees if you're going to be interviewing through that program. Ottawa has one more uh, route called the Social Accountability Initiative. And this is two seats reserved in their class for people who, uh, or who are eligible for it. And it's essentially people that have gone through financial stress or financial burden in grade 11 and 12 in high school. And this is specifically in grade 11 and 12. So if it's been a while since you've been in high school, um, you might have to go digging for some of your tax information for some of your parents' tax information as well if you were dependent. Um, and this is all information that you're going to have to provide. So if you went to school, I don't know, grade 11 in 2012, and then uh, you ended grade 12 in 2014, you're going to have to provide tax information for 2012, 2013, 2014 for your family. And I think the family income is supposed to be under $60,000. So um, if you qualify for that, that's something you might also be interested in applying for. You can find the form for it on OMSAS, and then you have to submit the form on OMSAS as well. You still have to hit the October 1st deadline, though, the OMSAS October 1st deadline. Now, here's a nice question that I found in their FAQ on their website. It's, should I apply to both the Social Accountability Initiative and the CNFS program? Uh, Ottawa recommends that you don't do this. If you qualify for the CNFS program, you should just apply to that. Um, and they won't, and like you shouldn't really apply for the Social Accountability one because they do already have eight seats that they're holding for the CNFS program. So yeah, I think that's it for Ottawa. Great. Um, so now we're going to transition on over to something that's a little more applicable to all schools. So we're going to talk for a bit about the MD PhD programs. So the MD PhD, you get accepted to do your MD and your PhD. Usually this takes seven to nine years, depending on the school. Um, and each school is a little bit different, but there are some commonalities between all of them. So for every program, you're going to check off that you want to apply to MD PhD on your OMSAS application because it's going to open up different tabs and stuff with places to submit what you need to submit. Also, you're going to have to submit everything for your MD and then anything for the PhD portion will be on top of that. So the baseline, all your MD application stuff, reference letters, transcripts, all of that needs to be in as per usual for your MD. And then in addition to that, for each school, you need a letter of interest and intent. So why you want to do an MD PhD, what your area of uh, interest is for research, why you think you'd be good for the position, that kind of thing. You need to submit your CV. So hopefully this is where you're submitting um, all of your previous research experience. And then you also need two letters of reference, except for U of T, you need three. So for every school, it's two, except for U of T, you need three. And um, they recommended all schools that a research supervisor be one of those references, obviously. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it makes sense. Uh, yeah, it makes so sense. the structure and such is a little bit different at each school. So I'm just going to kind of like rapid fire through them a little bit. But if you want more information, go check it out on our resources tab on the websites. Uh, but we'll start with Ottawa. So Ottawa takes four students every year for the MD PhD, maximum four, but they have submitted plans to enroll more students. So that might increase, the spots might increase in coming years. The deadline for all the MD PhD application stuff is October 1st at Ottawa. Uh, the structure of their program is two years of pre-clerkship. So you do your one and your two of your MD, and then you do three, your three years for your PhD. If you need more than that, you take more than that. And then you go back and do your last two years in medical school. Um, 
So there are three different streams of admission. You can go to the MD-PhD program from your bachelor's degree, from a master's degree, or if you're currently in the middle of a master's degree and you haven't defended your thesis yet. So you don't need to be completed your master's degree to apply. Um, if you're applying for your bachelor's, obviously that's a little bit more competitive and they recommend that you have like pretty extensive research experience. So you've done a thesis in your undergraduate, you worked in labs in the summer, that kind of thing. Um, and then if you're applying from like during your master's, you need to have consent from your supervisor. So your supervisor does need to consent that you're going to be kind of leaving that master's program without defending your thesis to go continue on with um, the PhD, MD, PhD. You cannot apply from first year med. So if you've been accepted into the MD program, you cannot enter the MD, PhD program at Ottawa. So that's Ottawa. U of T has eight spots. There are three streams of admission. So similar to Ottawa, it's undergrad and grad. So BSc or MSc, and then first or second year of your MD. So um, if you're coming from, the, the requirements are the same for all. You need your personal essay, your letters of reference, your CV. Uh, you can't apply during your MSc. So you need to be completed that master's degree, defend your thesis. And then if you're in your first or your second year of your MD, you can also apply. The deadline is October 1st, just like Ottawa. So that's kind of cool that like you can get into the MD and then kind of go over to PhD. Um, they have two different like routes that you can take. So one is the sequential route where you do one year of medicine, one year in the lab of a potential research supervisor, and then you go into that lab for th four to five years and then you return to med for your final three years. And then the other one is integrated. So if you need a lead in period, like you need to recruit patients or you need to get through ethics, that kind of stuff that can take a little while, you do your two years of med um, and you work on this lead in stuff during the summers and then you go and do your PhD and you need to do two to four years dedicated to the PhD and then you return to med. Western is three spots. Their application is December 1st. Uh, they have two models. So three years of research, four years of med school. Um, usually you take that one if you're entering from an undergraduate degree or you do two years of med, three years of research, two years of med. And during that, you would continue your research or start your research in the summer months of your medical degree of the first two years of med. Um, Western doesn't say much more than that. They're kind of like, they like, Western likes to keep things easy. That's why I like them. McMaster's program, I don't understand. They have this whole graph about like the progression but because you don't get summers off it's kind of weird so you go from like your first whole year's PhD and then you have like a year and a half of med and then go look at the chart online because I'm not gonna be able to explain it to you but basically it takes seven years and you don't get any summers off um, and you switch between doing MD PhD but you end with your MD uh, their deadline for applying is November 1st um, you can apply from your BSc you still need that 127 in cars um, and the one thing that's specific to McMaster is you have to have a supervisor picked out by the time you're accepted into the program. So they recommend that once you get your interview, you start emailing potential supervisors because you need to find your own supervisor and that supervisor needs to be found before you enter the program. Whereas at other schools, you usually have your first year to kind of like find that person. Um, so McMaster's is a little bit more independent. So that's something to keep in mind is that if you do get invited for an interview, you need to start emailing supervisors right away. Uh, and then Queens is also interesting. This last one, sorry, you don't have to listen to my voice going on and on for much longer. <laughs> Queens is interesting because they have an MD PhD program, but they also have an MD MSc program. So you can do your MD and your masters. So if you're doing the masters, it's two years MD, two years um, of graduate school two years MD and then you're also spending your summers doing your master's degree. If you're doing PhD it's two years PhD, two years MD, one year PhD, two years MD. All of that stuff needs to be submitted to apply by, by October 14th um, and then for every school also I forgot to mention the interviews are run at the same day as your MD interview. So I know specifically at Western you go and you do your normal MD interview and then you also sit with a panel, a, a second panel for your PhD 
portion of that. Um, it might be a little bit different at every other school, but they all arrange them so that you're interviewing for both at the same time. And then also at everyone, if you apply MD PhD and you don't get accepted, you're still considered for the MD program only. So it's not like you're taking a risk. And if you don't get one of those eight spots or whatever, you're out. If you don't get applied, um, accepted to the PhD portion, you still are in the pool for MD. And that is everything about MD PhD. Woo! <laughs> That, that was, a, was a lot. That was a lot of information. <laughs> a lot of information. But, you yeah. know, if you're going into MD, PhD, good for you. That's awesome. Jeez. Yeah. I wish I, wish I could. Yeah. All right. So many years. Yeah. I, <laughs> so many. The thing is, because, like, you still have to do residency and stuff when you're done. And yeah. It's just, like, if, if, you, if you're going into MD, PhD, you better love research. You're a clinician researcher, clinician scientist. Yeah. What do they yeah, call it? For sure. Yeah, like you want to do research for the rest of your life. Yeah, just make sure that, like, that's something that you want to do. Alrighty, so we have two more pathways to talk about, and these ones, um, similar to MD PhD, kind of encompass all of the schools. So the first one we're going to talk about is the Military Medical Training Program, better known as MMTP on every website. And every medical school in Ontario has this, except McMaster. I don't want to say that, like, as a cold and hard fact, but when I looked on other websites and my Advain and Haley helped me, there was, like, no section about the MMTP. So keep that in mind um, if this is a program you're interested in. So the details about this program uh, posted on each website vary by school. So, again, we suggest going to our resource tab. We have all the links to all the different programs up. And click which ones you're interested in, but check because MMTP at UFT might be different than MMTP at Queens. It's very important. Um, so what is it? You're probably wondering. Um, it's a pathway designed for students uh, who have been, who have already been a part of the Canadian Armed Forces for at least 12 months. Um, and basically, those who are supported uh, by the Canadian Forces, um, their tuition is funded for the entirety of their medical school. So um, with that, uh, how does this help you? Um, there's also positions reserved for at each of the schools um, for students applying through this pathway. Um, if you're, again, so if you're approved under this pathway, the Canadian Armed Forces will fund your tuition. I don't know the exact details on this. I didn't see it on their website, but I have heard that after you go through um, this program, you are committed to the military for five years. Is that what you guys have heard as well? I don't know about the exact period term. of time, but yeah, I know that you have to be committed to the military uh, after you're done. It's called like a return of service agreement or something. Yeah. Perfect. All right. So um, again, check each school for the specific details. Uh, at Western, for example, you need to have served 12 months with the Canadian Armed Forces. And then you also need to verify that you're comfortable with your application being validated by the Armed Forces. So it'll be sent there. Uh, you still apply through OMSAS. You still have to get the same requirements that any other student applying to the MD program would. Um, and you might also be required to send an email or a letter to the schools indicating that you're applying through this stream. Again, if you're interested in this pathway, um, check out each school's website. I know, I think it was U of T. They had like the contact for someone at the Armed Forces. And I think each school has their own contact. And if you have questions, you can ask them as well. Something else that's kind of important to note is that you can also join um, the armed forces once you're in medical school. Yeah. So yeah. we'll have a podcast about this um, probably in a few months. You know, right now we're just focusing on like applying to medical school and getting into medical school. But it's a really great program, especially if you're interested in the armed forces and they do cover your tuition, uh, which is really great. All right. Do you guys have anything to else to add about MMTP? No, I don't. I have nothing to add. To that all righty last pathway um so this one is every single school has a pathway for this and this is um if you're applying as an indigenous applicant and so what's this program basically it's a pathway designed uh in recognition that indigenous applicants in canada face unique barriers in achieving higher education uh, the goal of the program is to provide equi equitable access uh, to indigenous applicants so if you identify as indigenous and want to apply to medicine what do you have to do Every school is a bit different in what they want or what they require from you. So be sure, again, to check the links we've provided. Uh, but basically for every school, they are going to require a few things. So they're going to require you to self-identify as Aboriginal on the OMSAS application. 
And then for each school, you will be required to provide proof of indigenous status or proof of ancestral origin. But when I was going through all the websites, each of the schools had something a little bit slightly different in what they wanted um, or what they required. So definitely check that out. And then just a really interesting piece of information that I only saw on Ottawa's website is that they said that some applications for proof of Aboriginal ancestry can take six months to 12, six to 12 months, sorry, um, to process. So if you are interested, definitely start that application early, just because um, if it does take some time, you don't want that to come up at the last second. And I think it's great that Ottawa mentioned that. I didn't see that anywhere else on any of the other websites. So first school um, would be U of T. And what do you need specifically for them? Uh, you need to complete the Indigenous Student Application Program, uh, I, or I think it's ISAP, Personal Essay, Explaining Your Community Connectedness or Intended Future Community Involvement, uh, in addition to what I stated above. So um, self-identifying as well as proof of Indigenous status. And that's pretty much all you need at U of T. And then at Western, uh, they also would like you to write a personal statement in the form of a letter describing why you've applied through the Indigenous stream and also request a letter of support from your community or Indigenous organization attesting to your involvement or connectedness to the community. So I think that was something I saw pretty common at all the Ontario medical schools is that they want um, some kind of letter of recommendation from your community. Can I just say something? I like how... Um... U of T ends all their stuff in SAP. Like they have BSAP. <laughs> yeah. They have, I, they have ISAP. If you're going to U of T, you probably need to get in contact with OSAP too because it's pretty expensive to live there. So <laughs> <laughs> don't that kill was me. Funny. That was, that that was, was a good funny. one. <laughs> you need funny. to add like a drum noise after that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll try to edit it in if I can. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. Is that it for Western, Kylie? Yep. That's U of T and Western. Okay, so Queens also wants a letter of support, like Western um, described. They want a separate letter to the chair admissions and admissions committee in which you declare your Indigenous ancestry and give specific information about First Nation, treaty, community, or organizational affiliation. Um, so the letter you need to request that you want to go through the Indigenous student pathway, uh, and then you also expand on your academic and personal background and reasons and motivation for wishing to become a physician. So this is kind of like a big personal statement essay where you not only talk about your um, involvement in your indigenous community and that kind of thing, you're also talking about overall your academic and personal experiences. Uh, and then McMaster, they call this the Facilitated Indigenous Admissions Program. Um, FIAP, I guess. That's not as catchy as ISAP, so yeah. step it up. No, they, it's <laughs> called FIAP. They have that everywhere. But, uh, so you, there's a supplementary application form on the Indigenous Student Health Sciences Office, and we'll have that linked in our resources as well. The application consists of a letter of consideration, declaration of ancestry documentation, letters of recommendation, and an agreement to meet with the faculty advisor of ISHS, which is the Indigenous Student Health Sciences Office, twice a year. So you meet with them to make sure that you're meeting all of your goals and that you know what supports are available to you as an Indigenous student. Uh, the interesting thing about McMaster is that you actually don't have to complete your MCAT before you apply if you're an Indigenous student. All you need to do is make sure that you've written the MCAT and you've scored 123 on CARS before offers of admission go out. So CARS is the only section that matters for you. You just need to get a 123 and you do not have to write that um, by the time that you actually apply to the school. You can write it just before May when you get the offer of admission. That's actually really interesting. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah I didn't know that either. Okay, um, that's it for Mac, right? That is it for Mac. Okay, I guess we'll go back to Trudeau's place back in Ottawa. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, Trudeau, sponsor us. Trudeau, please sponsor us. Come on the us. podcast. Yeah, Trudeau's like we'll that kind of guy Ottawa. where, like, well, he's that kind of guy where, like, he would randomly, like, tweet about this too if somehow it gets to him. So we just have to. Let's start DMing him every single let's day. Let's start DMing him every <laughs> He's gonna put us on like a on the list of just like please don't watch contact list. me like a watch list or something. <laughs> Honestly, um, but let's talk about Ottawa. So Ottawa, similar to other universities like we were talking about before, they're gonna require a letter of recommendation that um, has your declaration of Indigenous ancestry with specific information about your First Nation. So actually, I don't know why I said, um, I don't know what I was saying, but essentially what they want is a letter that. You talk about your indigenous ancestry and explain on a little bit more your treaty, your community, or other organizational affiliations that you have to indigenous things. Um, 
they will also like take into consideration your academic and personal background as well and an explanation for your reasons and motivations to become a physician. So that's really important. They will need a letter of recommendation from your First Nations Band Council, Tribal Council, Treaty Organization, or your community or organizational affiliation. So essentially what they're going to need is two letters, one from yourself talking about yourself a little bit, and then one is a letter of recommendation. But yeah, uh, moving slightly west, we head over to Nossum. Um and here you need to write a letter that declares your indigenous ancestry and gives specific info about your First Nations, treaty, community, or organizational affiliation. So that's kind of similar to Ottawa. The letter should include why you would like to be considered as, as an applicant for the indigenous admission stream, details about your cultural and personal background, examples of how you are culturally connected to your indigenous community, and pretty much anything else that you want to include that can uh, explain a little bit more about your indigenous heritage. Nossum would also like a letter of recommendation from your First Nations uh, Band Council, Tribal Council, Community, or Organizational Affiliation. So really, Nossum and Ottawa have very similar application processes uh, when you're applying to their respective Indigenous streams. All the applications are like, they they all kind of want the same thing. It's just really important to check each website just because they might have like a specific detail uh, that one school wants in their letter versus like what another school wants. So it's important... Again, we'll give you all the links. Uh, Just check those links to make sure you have exactly what they want. And that is everything from us this week. So we know that was like jam-packed with information. That was a lot of information, yeah. still have fun. I feel like I need to take a nap. Um, But the resources are all going to be linked, like we said. There's a link tree in our bio now where you can check out all of our links at once. Um, And tune in next week because we're going to be talking about medical school applications outside of Ontario. Like Kylie talked about at the beginning, we're going to be talking about all provinces that are not Ontario because we know those dates are coming up as well. Um, But thanks for listening to episode five. Episode five is our uh, episode on special access pathways in medicine. And thanks for hanging out with us another week. Thank you so much for hanging out with us. Thanks for listening to us. (laughs) Catch you guys next episode. Bye. Bye.